بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته brothers and sisters welcome to our tafsir of surah sad and the stories of the quran walhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us to listen to the uh, inshallah to go through the tafsir of uh, of uh, the story of daud and of uh, sulaiman alayhi salam and also of the uh, amazing sabr of Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam. Now there was one thing that I forgot to mention yesterday. That is, how do you know whether something um, that is afflicting you is a trial or is it actually a punishment? How do you know whether Allah likes you and is happy with you and so as a result he is giving you more uh, test or uh, that this is actually a, a punishment for a sin that you have done? Now. From all my readings uh, in the books of the ulama, this is a very difficult topic. Uh, it is sometimes really difficult to tell the difference. And the reason why is because if you imagine adab of Allah Azzawajal to be like a circle, so this is the punishment of Allah, and the trial of Allah is also another circle. There's actually a, a good amount of overlap, okay? So sometimes uh, a trial can be both a trial and an adab, yeah? It could actually be a trial Plus, it could actually be a punishment for what you have done. And sometimes it can be just a punishment, and sometimes it can actually be uh, just a trial, which is in order to lift your level and your status up. So the ones that are usually difficult to sometimes decipher is the one where it's in the middle, where it's both a trial and also an, a, a punishment. And uh, things like that can happen. So for example, uh, the trial of uh, the Sahaba in the battle of uh, of Uhud when the when the Muslimin lost. Awalamma asabatkum musibatun qad asabtum mithlaiha qultum anna hadha qul huwa min indi anfusikum. As Allah says, uh, and when the musibah has struck you and you have been struck by musibah before it, you said, where is it from? Allah says, say it is from yourself. So we know that the battle of Uhud was because the uh, the archers did not uh, listen to the Prophet Sallallahu and they and they abandoned their posts and as a result so therefore the battle of Uhud loss was a punishment for disobeying Allah Azawajal and his messenger but also the battle of Uhud was also a trial trial for who for those who did not actually disobey Allah and his messenger right so for them it's a trial also for those who did disobey Allah's messenger was a punishment and also a trial because the extent of the punishment may have been more or the tr extent of the trial may have been more than, uh, than what, uh, what was the normal punishment for disobeying Allah's messenger in this situation. So Wallahu ta'ala alam, uh, sometimes it is very difficult to tell the difference between the two because of the huge overlap. Sometimes very easy to say, say that this is an adab because of the punishment that I've done. Like what? You disobey your mom and suddenly you have a car accident, you know. Um, you, uh, uh, you know, uh, you're, uh, you uh, don't pay your zakat and then, um, you know, you're constantly haughty. You are into all types of sin and then suddenly uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides to, uh, you know, uh, take your job away from you and to give you, uh, you know, bankruptcy. So you know that this is adab from Allah Azza wa Jal. You bought this on yourself. You are the one who deals in alcohol and riba and does haram and doesn't pray and doesn't give his zakat and never went for hajj and doesn't care about Ramadan. How else do you expect Allah to deal with you except to give you some sort of adab or the other? Yeah? So we know that that is clearly an adab. So when do we know something is clearly an adab? Is when you're engrossed in sin and then a very negative situation comes on. That definitely is adab. When you're engrossed in ibadah, in good deeds, and then a trial comes on, then we know that this is actually a trial rather than a punishment. Like for example, the Battle of Badr. The Battle of Badr took place on the 17th of Ramadan when the Muslimin were, do, were being righteous. Initially, Ramadan was not obligatory to fast, right? It was Sunnah to fast. So the Sahaba would be on off fasting. Some would fast, some would uh, feed others instead of fasting. So we know it was a righteous time and they knew it was a righteous time and they knew it was uh, they were doing good deeds at that time and they were obeying Allah and His Messenger. There was nothing that they were doing that was engrossed in blatant sin. So we knew the trial of the Battle of Badr was a trial from, upon them. And whoever died in the Battle of Badr was a, 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 a test from Allah Azza wa It wasn't an adab. But there were certain things that are in the middle that are a trial uh, and an adab together. In the case of Ayyub alayhi uh, salam, we know that Ayyub alayhi was a righteous man. He knew that he was worshipping Allah Azza wa 
and all of these things happening, especially when he was engrossed in ibadah. Remember, he was praying, and then a group of people came and destroyed uh, parts of his crop. Uh, he was praying, and then uh, lightning came from the sky to burn off uh, the stuff that he was doing. He was praying, and then you know his children all all died in one go with uh, with, the, with the roof falling on his on their heads. So we know that all of this is just a trial from Allah Azza wa Jal because he was engrossed in good. And it was not going to be an adab and a punishment and a trial. No, it was going to be a trial only because this is the way Allah, Allah tests the people. So sometimes you can tell, sometimes you can't tell. And when you can't tell, have lots of sabr and make lots of dhikr and lots of istighfar. When you can tell, then have good thoughts about Allah. Praise Allah, thank Allah, have sabr and hope for mercy and hope for an easy escape from this trial. And may Allah Azza wa Jal make us of those people who, um, who are of those people, alhamdulillah, who have sabr. Now, one thing to remember regarding trials and, uh, uh, and tests from Allah Azza wa Jal is that a test can be in good or in bad. So your wealth can be a test, your health can be a test, um, good health and good wealth can be test, you know, meaning a lot of wealth, if Allah gives you, can be a test from Allah. Just like lack of wealth can also be a test from Allah Azza wa Jal, right? So just remember that, that the trial and test of Allah Azza wa Jal is something which is a sunnah of Allah. Yeah? خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ نُطُفَةٍ أَمْشَاجٍ نَبْتَلِيهِ فَجَعَلْنَاهُ سَمِيعًا بَصِيرًا Allah says in Surah Insan that we created mankind from a uh, uh, gushing fluid of semen and then nabtalihi we tested him so uh, this is the sunnah of allah he is the one who created uh, created death and life in order to test you so test is uh, part and parcel of our life and we have to get used to it and we have to know that every single thing is a test and that the test will continue until we enter jannah so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us sabr uh, I remember a brother of mine, who uh, a friend of mine, who always says in his email, can't wait to get over the bridge. <laughs> you know, can't wait to get over the bridge, you know, because the tests and trials continue all the way until you get over the bridge and until you get into the Jannah. May Allah Azza wa Jal uh, make us of those people who have sabr and have good thoughts about Allah and have sabr and tawakkul on Allah Azza wa Jal. Tayyip, let's, let's carry on today. Tayyip, today we have six prophets that Allah will mention inshallah Allah will mention six prophets now out of these six prophets four of them we will take uh, elsewhere inshallah like in surah maryam and other places we will take the story of the four other prophets and those four prophets that we will take the stories of in detail is Ibrahim والسلام, obviously the khalil of Allah azza wa jal. we know a little bit about Ibrahim I'm sure you know a little bit about Ibrahim but I want to tell you a lot more and that that I will tell you in surah maryam also, his two sons, this is Is Ishaq and Yaqub. Uh, you will hear a lot more about Ismail. Uh, I'm sorry, you will hear his two sons, Ismail and Yaqub. You will hear a lot more about Ismail in Surah Maryam. And you'll hear a lot about, uh, about Ishaq, inshallah, also in, um, in Surah, uh, uh, I believe in, uh, in Surah Yusuf, I'll tell you a lot more about him. And his son, so the son of Ismail, the son of Ishaq, which was a grandson, to Ibrahim was Yaqub. And Yaqub, uh, I will tell you a lot more about him, inshallah, in Surah Yusuf, when we come to Surah Yusuf, bithnillah. And well, alhamdulillah, here we are uh, talking about uh, two, other, uh, two other prophets of God that Allah Zawajal will tell you the names of. His name is one of them, his name is Al Yasa. Al Yasa. Uh, or Elisha, Eliza, uh, or Elijah, Elisha, as you want to call it, depending on Hebrew or whatever spelling you have. Uh, Wadal Kifil and Dhul Kifil uh, is the other one that we're going to talk about. These are two prophets that are only mentioned twice in the Quran, and we'll tell you a little bit about them, inshallah. طيب, so let's carry on. طيب, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, this is in Surah Sad, and this is verse number 45. Yeah? وَذْكُرْ عَبَدَنَا and remember our وَذْكُرْ عِبَادَنَا وَذْكُرْ عِبَادَنَا and remember our slaves Ibrahim yeah remember Ibrahim وَإِسْحَاقْ وَيَعْقُوبْ أُولِي الْأَيْدِي وَالْأَبْصَارِ the possessors of power meaning Allah had given them authority in the land وَالْأَبْصَارِ and vision and amazing isn't it I mean Allah says that Ibrahim was a man of vision 
man of vision and his son Ishaq was a man of vision and Yaqub was a man of vision. What was the vision that they had? The vision that they had for humanity to worship Allah Azza wa Jalla. That's what Ibrahim tried to do. He went to his people and said, you know, Hada Rabbi Hada Akbar. You know, he tried to teach them about Allah. Say, you know, this is, uh, you know, the stars. He must be God. Then when the star goes away, he goes, nah, I don't like the, I don't like things that go away. Then the moon comes and says, ah, oh, this must be God. This is bigger. Uh, then the moon goes away saying, oh Allah, if you don't guide me, then I'll be misguided. Then the sun comes up and then he says uh, loudly to people, ah, this must be God, this is better. But when the sun goes down, then he says, oh people, uh, I tell you now, none of these are gods. I was just, just pretending and trying to show you who, the, who your God should be. And uh, I have turned my faith, my face to the one who created all of these things, to the ones who created the east and the west, Allah, the Lord of the heavens and the earth. So he had a vision for his people. Now ask yourself, do you have a vision for your people? Do you have a vision for them to accept Islam, to become righteous and better? And you know, every one of the prophets, there were their, 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 their people who are disbelievers were still called their people, right? Yeah? Yeah? As Allah says in uh, in uh, in uh, uh, Surah Al-Araf, verse, uh, Surah number 7. What does he say? And to Thamud we sent their brother Salih. Yeah? And to Hud and to, the, and to Ad we sent their brother Hud. So can you see how Allah Zawajal always uses their brother? So wherever you're from, you might be a new Muslim or you might be living in uh, a foreign country. Wherever you are, they are your brothers, they are your family, they are your... They are your people, your qawm. And that's why all the, the, uh, the people, ya qawmi, ya qawmi, oh my people, oh my people, oh my people. They are your people. Whether they're believers or disbelievers, you have that haq over, uh, you have that, that obligation over them. And they have that haq upon you that you should guide them to the path. This is your obligation. So you must have vision. You must be someone who has a vision for your people. And you know, today, uh, it's quite ironic. We, we, we tend to have vision for people we love. So if we don't love our people, we won't have a vision. But we have a vision for our children. So we know our children should become doctors or lawyers, right? But do we have a vision for ourselves as a father? We don't. We should have a vision for our children and a vision for ourselves as a father of our children. We should have a vision for our parents and we should have a vision as ourselves uh, as a children for our parents. We have to have that. We have to have the brothers and sisters. We can't be of those people who simply have a vision for only limited things, like our finances and for our children, but not for our families and for our, our da'wah. We must be people who have a vision for everything. When we have that, that is when Allah will give you ulil aidi. He will give you wealth and strength, and He will give you the ability to carry that out. So that was Ibrahim, the Khalil of Allah Azza wa Jal, the one who was in the fifth heaven when, Allah, when the Prophet ﷺ went and met him. His son was, was Ishaq who Allah had blessed him with a lot of strength and a lot of ability and a lot of foresight and of course gave him Yaqub from whom Yaqub came the 12 sons and from those 12 sons two of them very righteous which was Yusuf and, and Benjamin and then the other 10 who were the ones that plotted to kill Yusuf and from the 12 came the Asbad, the 12 tribes of Banu Israel that are well known. So Wadkur وَذْكُرْ عِبَادَنَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَإِسْحَاقُ وَيَعْقُوبُ أُولِي الْأَيْدِي وَالْأَبْصَارِ إِنَّا أَخْلَصْنَاهُمْ Verily we, have, we chose them بِخَالِصَةِ ذِكْرَ الدَّارِ We chose them for one and one khalisa Only one and one simple, sincere purpose. And what is that purpose? بِخَالِصَةِ ذِكْرَ الدَّارِ We chose them in order to remind the people of the akhirah. ذِكْرَ الدَّارِ الدار, The true dar. The true abode is the Dar al Akhira. And that is what Allah says that we chose them to have only one purpose in their life, and that purpose was to remind the people that there will be another life that is coming up. There will be a day of judgment, there will be a meeting with Allah, then there will be Jannah or Jahannam, and there will be eternal life in either of blessings or in torment. So it's up to you to choose with your life of 70 years in this dunya which of the, uh, which of the two that you choose for yourself. So Alhamdulillah, Ya khwani, Allah says what the purpose of their life was. Do you know Allah created us with a purpose as well? Each and every one of us, Allah has given us a purpose. The question is, what is our purpose? And have you really thought about it? Have you ever pondered about, you know, why did Allah create me? You have to do this. Because the Prophet said, 
kullun muyassarun lima khuliqalah. Every person is helped by Allah to do what he was created for. So if you're created for this purpose, you should you should seek it. And if you're created for another purpose, you should seek it. Okay. Innahum, so in akhlasnahum bi khali sati dhikradar, we chose them for the special purpose of remembering the akhirah only. Wa innahum, and they are indana with us. La min al mustafain al akhyar, they are from the chosen, beloved slaves of mine. And Allah chose them because of the goodness of their father Ibrahim. And because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put Iman in their, in their genes. And you know, uh, there, you know I, I, there's a statement that I always say that taqwa is in the genes, you know. That's why you marry into good families. Because if a father was good, inshallah khair will continue. And when the father is good and the parents are good, the children will be good. Many of us, subhanallah, you know, we struggle in our lives because a lot of our parents were not very righteous. They were not scholars, they were not ulama, they were not du'a, they were not big philanthropists in the path of Allah Zawajal. And so many of us struggle and suffer. But this is not the time to blame our parents for it. This is the time to blame ourselves that now that Allah has guided us and opened up our eyes, are we going to guide ourselves and are we going to become better parents for our own children? So you know, and I'll tell you something, that the, if your children are being wasted and they are not guided, that's probably because of you. Start with you first. Start with the man in the mirror, the woman in the mirror. Because we are the first cause for our children becoming misguided. If we are righteous and pious, then Allah will guide our children. Sa'id ibn Musayyib, one of the great scholars of the past, he used to look at his children and say, Ya Bunayya, O my son, la azidanna min salati min ajlik. I'm going to pray a lot more because of you. Why? Because I know that when I'm righteous, Allah will look after you. So you see, if your parents don't pray and fast, and all the parents listening in, if you don't become righteous and become better, and if you don't give more zakat and more hajj and do more hajj and, and give more sadaqah, if you don't do all of these things, then your children are going to be misguided. And you've got to remember, you've got to remember that the way to look after your children is to give more sadaqah, to become more righteous in the eyes of Allah, not the other way, which is that we save all our wealth, uh, leaving it for our children, thinking that, that we're going to look after them. No. The best way is to become righteous with Allah, then Allah will look after them. Innahum عِنْدَنَا لَمِنَا مُسْتَفَيْنَ akhyar. Then Allah says, وَذْكُرْ Ismail, And remember also in the book, Ismail, the other son of Ibrahim a.s. Ismail wal Yasa' Who was Yasa'? Yasa' was the cousin of another prophet of God called Ilyas, who Allah speaks about in the Quran. Wal Yasa' was a cousin. And Yasa' was chosen uh, because of his righteousness. Uh, to become a prophet of God. And not much is known from the Islamic traditions about Al-Yasa'. However, in the uh, Hebrew traditions, there's a lot that is said about Al-Yasa'. There's a great detail of uh, miracles that he did. Uh, uh, sometimes he cursed people, sometimes he uh, elevated others, he helped the poor, the needy, the sick. Uh, he uh, blessed people. Uh, with, the, with, the, with the blessings of Allah A lot is said about him But there is, a, there is one thing that is stopping me From telling you everything that's said about him In the Hebrew scriptures or in Israeliyat And that is that the Prophet The authentic hadith was asked about What the Ahlul Kitab say About the people of the past So the Prophet said Do not believe them nor, uh, nor disbelieve them Meaning that a lot of what they say Some of them is true, some of them is false Right? It's all mixed up so neither believe everything they say, nor disbelieve in what they say. So what do you do? Sometimes the, the scholars of the past chose the option of, of uh, repeating uh, the stories of the people. Uh, and when they did so, if it was from, Abu, uh, if, if it is from the righteous Sahaba, like, uh, uh, like um, I mean, all the Sahaba are righteous, but if it's from the, from the very well-known Mufassirin Sahaba, like Ibn Abbas and others, then we usually report it. And that is the, the way of the pious predecessors to report it because Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud were more righteous than us and they, they chose, they knew what to choose and they would have chosen based upon their understanding of the Prophet and their and the surrounding there. Um, and, and that is the criteria that I apply and that is a criteria that a lot of scholars of tafsir also apply, such as Al-Baghawi uh, applies in his tafsir of Al-Baghawi, uh, Ma'alam al-Tanzil, where he applies this principle that if Ibn Abbas were narrated a Israeli tradition, then that is a sign that Ibn Abbas approved it and the taqwa of Ibn Abbas and his being a prophet, uh, his being a companion of the prophet of God 
showed that you know it is something that we can also have a higher, I guess, trustworthiness of that statement than than others. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Wal yasa' wa dal kifl. And dal kifl was uh, a student of al yasa'. Uh, al yasa' and al dal kifl, they lived in, um, in, uh, in Syria, Lebanon, this area, Sham. And he, subhanAllah, this place has so many prophets of God, you know, subhanAllah. And um, sometimes I joke with my wife, you know, it's like, you know, you guys had so many prophets of God. What happened to you guys? You know, <laughs> you know, just joking with them sometimes like, you know, what's wrong with the Arabs today? You know, you had so many prophets of God come to you all, not just one, you know, uh, us Bengalis, Indians, Pakistanis, who knows how many prophets of God came to us. But you guys had so many that are mentioned in the Quran, you know, you guys should be better than us. So, well, yes, well, kifal. The kifal, what does the kifal mean? The kifal means the one who uh, uh, keeps his, uh, his, uh, his promise. Yeah, the one who keeps his promise. So, wal yasa' wa dal kifal. Dal kifal, al yasa' was reported uh, in the narrations that, that al yasa' was sitting around with his companions. He was getting old and he knew that the end of his time would be coming. And so he set up a challenge. And that challenge was, who, who amongst you can uh, fast all day and pray all night uh, and not get angry? These are the three things he said. Fast all day, pray all night, and not get angry. So no one stood up except the Al-Kifl, this man, stood up and said, I own a prophet of God, I'll take up the challenge. Uh, the second day, again, uh, al yasa asked the same question. Again, the Al-Kifl put up his hand saying, I'll take up the challenge. The third day, al yasa again asked the same question. And then again, the Al-Kifl put up the challenge, and so the Al-Kifl was chosen. So the Al-Kifl, uh, it was reported that he never used to sleep all day or all at night except for a small amount of qaylula that he would sleep at Dhuhr time. And um, is it possible for human beings to sleep less? Yes, it is possible. Uh, though sometimes sleep does catch up with you, but this is the miracle Allah had given the Al-Kifl. That the, the, the Al-Kifl used to only feel tired for about two hours or so during Dhuhr time or after Dhuhr time. And then uh, that was the only sleep that he had, and then he would fast the whole day and pray the whole night. Uh, so it was reported that the shaitan tried to test the al-kifl and tried to make him angry. And so he came in the form of a man who would always knock on the door of the al-kifl. At that time, the al-kifl would sleep. So it would happen that the al-kifl got tired and tired and tired until shaitan wanted to stop him from actually praying at night because he would make him so tired. But it was reported that the al-kifl uh, uh, had patience and sabr uh, despite losing his sleep for two or three days in a row and uh, it was reported that Dal Kifl uh, f- fell asleep on the third day the shaitan came again knocked on his door and then but alhamdulillah on the third day Allah showed Dal Kifl that this was actually shaitan not an old man because originally shaitan came in the form of an old man and Dal Kifl from his goodness of his heart how can you say no to him even if I'm asleep um, and so uh, Yani, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, the Al-Kifl continued on without getting angry and he continued on being a righteous slave of Allah, fasting all day and praying all night. وَكُلُّ مِنَ الْأَخْيَارِ Allah says, and all of them are from the best of people. All of the best of people. I mean, you know, when Allah Zawajal attests to the, to the greatness of human beings, that shows how great Allah Zawajal, that shows how great these people were. Yeah? And, uh, you know, in, in the other verses, Allah Zawajal says, you know, uh, in this verse that I just re- recited in Surah, in the same Surah, in verse 44, Allah says about Ayyub, Inna wajadnahu sabira. Our Shaykh used to say, Kayfa wajad, wajadka Allah. Huh? How has Allah found you? Allah found Ayyub. Allah says, Inna wajadnahu. We found him sabira. We found him to be patient. So uh, our Shaykh used to say, Kayfa wajadka Allah. How has Allah found you today? Yeah? So ask yourself, Ikhwati, how has Allah found you today? Are you from the best of people? You from the ones who are helping people, praying, fasting, being as close to Allah as possible, coming closer to Allah, repenting for your sins, being good to your parents, or are you from those people who are unfortunately are from the worst of people today, who are fasting but not praying, bad mouthing others, uh, uh, being filthy with your speech, uh, watching Indian Bollywood movies, and uh, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, sitting around making riba people. Are you of those? So subhanallah, subhanallah. Hada dhikr. This is the remembrance. Wa inna lil muttaqina la husna ma'ab. And for those who fear me, are la husna ma'ab are the best of abodes, the best of gardens. 
Jannati Adnin, the beautiful gardens of Eden. Mufattahatan, Mufattah, yani Maftuh, Allah could have said Maftuh, but Allah said Mufattah. Yani, what does the word Mufattah mean? It is, uh, it, it, it is the, it, it, it is to say that something is always open. Yeah? So if you say Maftuh means it's open, but when you say something is Maftuh, it can also take the possibility that it can close sometimes. But when Allah says Mufattaha, it means that it is always open, forever open. Yeah? So for them, for the Muttaqeen, will be a Husna Ma'ab, will be a beautiful abode. Jannat, the Adnin, so the gardens of Eden, Mufattahatan. Mufattahatan means always open, perpetually open. Lahumul Abwab, for them the doors. Meaning for these uh, righteous people, such as the nine prophets of God that Allah just mentioned, the gardens of Eden, the doors will always be open. Ya Rabbi, Ya Allah, we wish this would be the case for us. You know, for us, the gardens of Eden, the doors of Jannah open for us sometimes. When does it open? It opens for us in the authentic hadith when we make wudu. And we say, Ashhadu Allah, ilaha illa wahdahu la sharika, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu rasulu. Radaytu billahi rabban wa bi Muhammadin rasulun wa bil Islam dinan. Allahumma ja'alna min at tawwabin wa ja'alna min al mutatahirin. If we after making wudu and we raise up our fingers and we say the shahada and we say the dua that I just mentioned, re rewind back and try and learn the dua. And you can also check it up in Hisn Muslim, the dua after wudu. And if you say this, then the doors of Jannah are all open to you. Yeah? Also in another authentic hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is about women especially, he said, whichever woman dies, yeah, uh, whilst her husband is pleased with her and while she has prayed her five daily prayers and fasted her Ramadan and preserved her private parts, right? Ayyuma imra'atin sallat khamsa'a wa samat shahraha wa hafidhat farjaha wa ata'at zawjaha, four things, prayed her five daily prayers, fasted all of Ramadan, preserved her private parts, meaning perfected her hijab, and uh, uh, listened to her husband, qila laha yawm al it will be said to her on the day of judgment, enter Jannah from whichever door you wish. Enter Jannah from whichever door you wish. So the doors of Jannah do open up for many of us as well, but they do also close when we sin. And for these prophets of God, they were so good and righteous that Allah says, Mufattahatan lahumul abwaab, the doors of Jannah will always be open for them. Muttaki'ina fiha, they will be reclining therein. Reclining, not sitting up, not sleeping, but reclining, you know? Uh, because sitting up is just too much work, and sleeping is like, man, there's no sleep in Jannah, right? So reclining. You know, so muttaki'ina fiha, reclining therein, yad'oona fiha, they will call upon, bifakihatin, beautiful fruits, kathiratin, lots of beautiful fruits, masharab, and all sorts of drinks. You know, before I came to Malaysia, I only thought there was water and milk and coke. That's the only drinks I thought there was. Then I came to Malaysia, right? And in Malaysia, the restaurants, they make all of these different types of drinks, halal drinks, right? Some of them were, you know, are alcoholic, but they make the halal version of them. And like, good Lord, is this how punch tastes? Is this how mojito tastes, halal mojito? Is this how it tastes? Good Lord, you know, when you taste some of the drinks, then you're like, subhanallah, subhanallah, there's something more than milkshake. There's something more than just milk and water. And you know, when you taste them, say, subhanallah, the drinks of Jannah must be so blessed, so amazing. My brothers and sisters of Islam, they will drink out of pleasure. They will not drink out of thirst. They will drink because of the, the absolute pleasure it creates in the taste buds of the mouth and how they feel after they have drunk. وَعِنْدَهُمْ And there will be for them قَاصِرَاتُ الطَّرْفِ أَطْرَاب قَاصِرَاتُ الطَّرْفِ And he always lowering their gaze. And there's something beautiful about a beautiful woman who lowers her gaze, you know. Subhanallah, something very attractive that men find. وَعِنْدَهُمْ قَاصِرَةُ الطَّرْفِ So they're always humbling, lowering the gaze. أَطْرَاب أَطْرَاب are companions of equal age. Yeah? Or companions of equal age. Some scholars said that means full-breasted women. Uh, and that means that they are around the age of 33 years old. Companions of equal age. حُورُ الْعِينَ That will be their companions. Serving them their uh, beautiful wine and their uh, beautiful drinks and whatever else that they want. Uh, and uh, will will always be with them, you know. And this is the eternal Jannah, the eternal gardens that Allah has promised. Hada, and this is the dhikr. This, wa ma tu aduna liyawm al hisab. And this, and this you will be, and this is the promise 
that will be given to you on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment. Ya Salam, Ya Rabb. Oh Allah, make us from the followers of these prophets and keep us with them, Ya Rabb. You know, our deeds will never reach their deeds, you know. And our ibadah and our taqwa will never reach their level. But there is a hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu that makes me really happy when I read this hadith. And so Alhamdulillah for this hadith. And uh, you know, when the Sahaba heard this hadith, they were also ecstatic. They, so a Sahaba came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, my deeds will never reach yours. And whatever I do, Ya Rabb, uh, yani, uh, ya Rasulullah, my, yani, my good deeds will never reach yours. I don't know where I'll be on the day of judgment. I don't know if I'll be able to be with you. And I don't know if I'll be able to, you know, uh, be near you. So, so the Prophet sent this authentic hadith. He said, Al mar'u ahab. The people will be with the ones that they love. The people will be raised up with the ones that they love. So Anas, may Allah have mercy upon him. Anas, the companion, the, the, the narrator of this hadith, he said, he said, Wallahi, we were never happier until we have heard a hadith like this, this hadith, Rasulullah says, we were the happiest people after this. Then Anas continues, this hadith in Sahih Muslim. He says, so oh Allah, I make you my witness that I love Rasulullah. And I love this Anas who's saying this. He said, I love Rasulullah. And I love Abu Bakr. And I love Umar. And I love Uthman. And I love Ali. And I hope, oh Allah, that you make me with them. Even though my deeds will never reach their deeds. So oh Allah, Zawajal, Allah keep us with the people that we love. And not keep us with the people that he hates. And give us a chance to be with Ayyub. And to be with Suleiman and with Dawood. And with all of these prophets, Ibrahim and Isaac and Yaqub and, and Ismail and Yasa and Dal Kifil and all of them, even though our deeds will never reach theirs, may Allah give us a chance to be with them and to recline on the couches with them. What a terrible tragedy would be to read this Quran. What a terrible tragedy would be to read this Quran and not get a chance to be with such people. And to read their stories and not get a chance to be with them it would be a, such a terrible tragedy, brothers and sisters. So ask Allah today with a pure, sincere heart, sincerely, Ya Rabb, raise me up with them. Forgive me my sins. Raise me up with them. Give me a chance to be with them on the day of judgment. My deeds are not theirs. But my love has reached them and, and reached you, Allah. So raise me up with the people. That we love. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakum Allah khair. Let's take a little bit more, inshallah. We've got a little bit more time left. Let's take a little bit more. And uh, let's take a little bit more of this, inshallah. Uh, so we need to try and finish off Surah Saad by tomorrow, inshallah. وَعِنْدَهُمْ قَاصِرَاتُ الطَّرْفِ أَطْرَابِ هَذَا مَا تُوْعَدُونَ لِيَوْمِ الْحِسَابِ This is what you've been promised for the Day of Judgment. So Allah says in, in, in this Surah, in verse number 54, إِنَّ هَذَا لَرِزْقُنَا This is my provision, my giving, my offering. مَا لَهُ مِنْ نَفَادِ This will never end. This will never end, never finish. Jannah and these beautiful gardens, ma laha min nafad, they will never ever finish. Hada, meaning, and this is the poetic nature of this Quran, that Allah says, hada, hada, and this means, hada mean hada dhikr. Some scholars say this means hada dhikr, meaning this is a remembrance, or hada, meaning, and with this, or upon this, or in addition to this, wa inna littaghina la sharra ma'am. As for those who are away from my path, who, who go away from my way, for them is the sharra ma'ab, is the worst of abodes. The worst of abodes. Jahannam. For them will be Jahannam. Yaslawnaha. They will enter it. Fabi'sal mihad. So what a terrible home or a mahd. Mahd basically means the resting place. So Jahannam yaslawnaha. Jahannam they will enter. Fabi'sal mihad. What a terrible resting place 
it is for them. And it's called resting place, though it's not a place of rest. Resting place meaning the destination is a better translation here. So what a terrible destination will it be for them? Hada and with this they will be made to taste the torment of Hameen, of boiling water. And we know the boiling water that Allah Azza mentions is the water from which the internal organs will all melt and will break up. And what's ghassaq? Ghassaq means every filthy, filthy pus. Some scholars said ghassaq can also mean extremely, extremely cold, uh, cold uh, filthy fluid from which uh, everything freezes and then on top of that you put the hot water and everything breaks. You know, have you seen like for example, um, uh, you know, try putting uh, some liquid nitrogen into a cup and then put the cup in boiling water, what happens then, poof, it just breaks. Uh, because the liquid nitrogen is, is condensing, the other ones, or you do the opposite, I'm sorry, so you put boiling water uh, into a cup and then put the cup into liquid nitrogen it just disintegrates, you know, and that's what happens to your body with ghassaq plus hameen. May Allah Azza wa Jal preserve us from drinking these fluids, Ya Rab. وَآخَرِ وَآخَرُ مِن شَكْلِهِ أَزْوَاجِ And from وَآخَر uh, and a lot of other uh, types of punishment, min shaklihi, from the same type, azwaj. And they are azwaj, meaning they are similar, they are like, they are, uh, they are different Anwar and species of punishments. So one would be eating type of punishment. One would be, uh, uh, you know, angels ripping your your body punishment. One would be uh, animals from the Jahannam ripping your part punishment. One would be uh, that you are just being burnt, the skin being burnt punishment. Ya Salam, Allah Azza wa Jal preserve us from this. Ya Rab, Allah please don't let us enter Jahannam even for a single second. Wa akharu min shaklihi azwaj and different types of punishment uh, similar to this. This is a fawj. Fawj meaning a, com a company or a group of people. ma'akum. They will be made to enter Jahannam with you. La marhaban bihim. There is no welcome for them. Innahum salun nar. They are going to taste the Jahannam uh, with you. Qalu. So who said, this is the people who are in Jahannam already. قَالُوا بَلْ أَنْتُمْ لَا مَرْحَبًا بِكُمْ Rather, uh, you, O oh people, there is no marhaba, no welcome for you. أَنْتُمْ قَدَّمْتُمُهُ لَنَا You are the ones who have brought this upon us. فَبِئْسَ الْقَرَارِ So woe to you and what a terrible thing you have done for us. بِئْسَ الْقَرَارِ What a terrible decision we have made. What a terrible decision it was for us to follow you and, and come into this Jahannam. Qalu Rabbana. So what so basically in those verses, Allah is talking about the followers and the leaders. So the followers will enter, and when the followers have entered, then the leaders will enter, and then the followers will tell the leaders that you are the ones who have caused us to enter into this, so there is no welcome for you. So uh, 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 you know, taste the same adab and punishment. And uh, they will ask Allah to increase the punishment. Look what they say. Qalu, they will say, meaning the followers will say, Rabbana, man qaddama lana hadha. O oh Allah, the ones who have caused us to feel this torment, fazidhu, so increase for him, adaban, da'fan fin nar, increase for him and, and double the torment of Jahannam for him. And this is the, the, the bad thing. You know, in Jannah, when people enter into Jannah, they'll be so lovely, they will ask, O oh Allah, where is that brother that I had? Please bring him to me. Meaning, raise them up in levels. In Jannah, everyone will be asking uh, Allah. Uh, they will be, uh, uh, yani, we will be raised up in levels beyond our deeds because of the du'a of our brothers and our sisters and our friends and our uh, uh, and and our families. But in Jahannam, the people hate each other so much that they'll be asking for double the punishment upon each other. The only du'a that they'll be telling each other is not, Oh Allah, please my brother is there, please decrease his punishment. No, no, no. It'll be the opposite. They'll be like, Oh Allah, that one? That one, I remember that one. He did this to me. Double it for him, Ya Rab. Double the punishment upon him, you know. So it's such a terrible place, subhanAllah. No rahmah, no mercy. The filthiest of people, the worst of human beings. وَقَالُوا مَا لَنَا لَا نَرَى رِجَالًا كُنَّا نَعُدُّهُ مِنَ الْأَشْرَارِ and what is wrong with us? What is wrong with us that today we do not see those people that we used to think that they are from the, from the evil ones. 
uh, where are those people that we used to think that they're from the evil ones? Why are they not here? أَتَّخَذْنَاهُمْ سِخْرِيًّا أَمْ زَاغَتْ عَنْهُمُ الْأَبْصَارِ We had taken them uh, as سِخْرِيًّا meaning as a joke. أَمْ زَاغَتْ عَنْهُمُ الْأَبْصَارِ Has our eyes now defeated us? Can we, are they here but we cannot see them? إِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَحَقٌ تَخَاسُمُ أَهْلِ النَّارِ That is the truth that will be eating away at the أَهْلِ النَّارِ The people of the fire. Meaning, what they're saying is, where are those people that we th thought they were the worst of us? Meaning, they are now in Jannah. Because you consider them worse. They were the, the poor ones. They were the ones who believed in Allah. You consider them to be the worst. And you know, today, uh, the world considers a lot of practicing Muslims. I, mean, I don't say the world. I think that would be uh, unjust. But a lot of people see practicing Muslims as uh, Islamists, as uh, terrorists or uh, non-violent extremists as they call it you know and you know subhanallah yani, you're seeing good people muslimin those who are righteous pious worshiping allah you see there was non-violent extremist i mean are you got to you got to be kidding me you got to be kidding me it's like this is this is the the same type of statement that the people of jahannam will be saying that you call them non-violent extremists you call them all of this you call, you consider them for the evil you thought that they would be with you in Jahannam, but no, they're not. They're actually someplace else, which is in Jannah, insha'Allah. And this is the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers, my sisters, my friends, everyone listening to this tafsir, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure that you don't enter Jahannam by loving the people that, you, that are righteous and pious and doing good deeds. And be wary of these evil people who will enter Jahannam, just like the people of Quraysh, who now, they have now no excuse in front of Allah and the truth has been established, established upon them and they will never ever come out of Jahannam ever like people like Abu Jahal, Abu Lahab and others. May Allah Azza wa Jalla save us from that. Inshallah tomorrow we'll finish off Surah Saad and we'll enter, I believe, into Surah Kahf, inshallah. Let's enter into Surah Kahf tomorrow with all the stories that Allah has to tell us about uh, about the beautiful people of, 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 of Kahf. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.